Hey guys, hey. it's Joy and Brandon. Uh, and before we get to the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast, we want to tell you about Health IQ. Health IQ uses science and data to secure lower rates on life insurance for health conscious people. So if you're living an overall healthy lifestyle, you have a 60% lower risk of mortality than someone who isn't. So whether you're a runner or a cyclist, mm. Or a vegan. Shout out snacks. Shout out snacks. Uh, you name it, Health IQ rewards you by saving you money on your life insurance. So more than half of Health IQ customers save between four and thirty-three percent, and these savings are exclusive to Health IQ. To learn more, to see if you qualify, get your free quote at healthiq.com/crazy, or mention promo code crazy when you talk to Health IQ agents. Now let's get back to the show. We're loving these bonus pods lately. Love Very special bonus pod with Mercedes Lewis of the Jacksonville Jags. Yes. He is a teammate of Blake Bortles. Best friend of Blake Bortles. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> UCLA a Bruin um, and is really fun. So he joins us and I hope you guys enjoy. Check it out. All right, Mercedes Lewis, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Jacksonville Jaguar. We were, we were talking before you came in uh, that you actually played a little basketball at UCLA, and you're obviously a tight end. What is it about the basketball and the tight end transition there? Uh, I think, you know, for me, uh, I was a football player first, so it was a little different. I think, you know, most of the guys are basketball players, and then they're like, oh, they're athletes. Let's, you know, bring them over to the football field and see how it translates. But for me, I started playing football when I was eight, and then, um, you know, I didn't play basketball until I was 13. I just got uh, really good, like really fast, and so – you know, something that I took to, you know, really quick. And, you know, I got offered for football from UCLA at the end of my sophomore year. And then midway through my senior year in high school, they offered me for basketball. So I just made them put it, you know, one, you know, one offer. And then I think as far as how it translates, I, I think that, you know, if you're, you know, a bigger guy, you know, six six, six five, but you, you know, have good feet and know how to, you know, use your body spatially, going up for the ball and things like that, um, you know, going up for rebounds and being able to box guys out. and mm -hmm. uh, it's, just, it's just an easy transition for you. Jason, my brother, actually played uh, a year of basketball. He still plays pickup, which I think really? is like – Was he good? I mean, he was good enough to play Division One, I, I guess, whatever that means, Akron. Sure. I don't know. I want to see Jason Taylor hoop. Uh, yeah, I've seen it. It's you know, it's like this. <laughs> I, I, I love Jay. He's, he's, he's good. He's good, but the problem when he plays now – is do you still play at all or they don't let you do that um so i have a trainer um that i do one-on-one -on -one stuff with as mm. far like part of my training so i'm doing cones uh broomstick when they're closing out shooting over the broomstick going through the chairs like i'm doing it all still so that's a lot yeah i'm not i'm not <laughs> playing like in crazy groups where right. i'm trying to dunk and get well, yeah that's what but, it is so like yeah. if you're if you get an opportunity to play pick up basketball against jason taylor you're gonna you're gonna try a little harder, you know, and oh, yeah. then sometimes you get the guy with like in the gym shorts, no like question. yeah, I want to try and do something, so they get a little crazy. For sure, and then you gotta start swinging elbows. And... Yeah, it's very dangerous. I I, I, I don't know. I, it's... I, would, I would injure whoever I'm on the court with. Just, just <laughs> well, you're gonna do that by ball. accident. <laughs> just yeah, 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 yeah. I zaza on accident. Uh huh. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So why did you end up not continuing with basketball? Um. Well, that I, I'll put it in like a little small little uh, quick story. So. You know, my, my football coach didn't really like it, you know. They never do. No, they don't. Uh, Carl Durrell got there, and, you know, he knew what it was about. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for me, it was about experience and both because that's what I wanted to do, like, my whole life. And so I tried to take advantage of that, and he was like, I mean, you're not here for mad drills, and you're one mm -hmm. of the leaders, and, you know, you're not here in the winter, and the guys are upset. All the guys loved me. Nobody right. was upset. <laughs> right. He was just trying to say that just to kind of, you know, mess with my mind a little bit. I kind of ignored it and put it off, and then, you know, he ended up calling my mom, and then my mom got involved. You know how it is in college, like, your mom shouldn't even be involved in which, this ain't high school. Right, yeah, You know, yeah, I don't yeah. want to hear none of that. Right. My mom hit me up, like, you need to, you know, do what you were there to do, and like, I'm like, what? And then my <laughs> head coach was like, well, you can only be, you know, good in two sports, but great in one, you need to make your mind wow. up. I'm just like, so I, it, it just became overwhelming, and then, you know, Going between 225 and 245 during mm -hmm. football season, my body was just – I couldn't handle it no more anyway, so it was just a no-brainer for me. And I, Well, I mean, in their defense, it sounds like they pushed you in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're getting drafted or going to the next level in anything, they look for rare traits, mm -hmm. right? And 
you know, for football being, you know, 6'6", and coming out of high school at 235, being athletic and doing all of that, I was very rare at that size. And, you know, in basketball, I mean, it's, it's a lot of guys that are 6'6", right. 220, you can mm -hmm. shoot the ball, run, jump, and all of that. So uh, from that standpoint, it was a no-brainer for me. Football coaches always hating on basketball. Hey, well, I mean, well, the first thing when Coach Kelly got there, he said, "No hats in the building, no earrings in the building, and no basketball." We was like, "Whoa, whoa, 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 whoa!" It's crazy. Uh, well, Hold up. I mean, who are you voting for now? Look, at, look, right. look where you went to school. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yes, yes, of course. All but right. like, like, like wearing, wearing a hat on. backwards at that school is like blasphemous, right? That's Not a, if it's a dad hat. That's a sin. Dad hats can be worn backwards. He went to <laughs> he went to Notre Dame, so you know how they do it. We're a little special. Uh, speaking of big guys, Blake Bortles. Mm. Your guy, big mm. board holes. We give Blake a little. We give I give not a little. Blake, the, listen, Blake, a, Blake, a little slack around here. Blake, Blake gives all the respect. All okay, so he the he respect. loves Blake. Yes. I don't I don't have any personal problem with Blake. I just I he just got paid, which I guess he should have. Yes, um, but <laughs> look, Blake has Blake likes throwing the ball to the other team. That he does. I wouldn't say, well, Blake is my guy, so. Um, I wouldn't I, expect I, I you to say bad things about yeah, Blake. But well, if, I, can't, if, I can't let you bash him like that. But <laughs> what I will say, what I will say is that um, Blake hasn't had an offensive coordinator for more than one year, mm. right? And if we're going to talk about anything, we need to start there. Uh, Jacksonville has been a place over the last, like, six or seven years. And mind you, it's my 12th year, so right. I know what getting better looks like, right? Right. So we haven't had, you know, a head coach that we could just hang our hat on. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, we know who we're getting. We know what we're walking into every single year going into camp. And it's not going to be like a filling out or, mm -hmm. or do we mesh or do the coaches, you know, like me. or we've done, I've done that every single year, right? And so for a young guy coming out of college early, right, getting thrown into the fire mm -hmm. and expecting him to be the savior. High draft pick. Right? And then when everybody else around you is not necessarily playing up to that level because we've been bad for so long, it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. You know? And, you know, for him to, you know, go out there and do what he did this year and, you know, aside from being a butt of everybody else's jokes, mm -hmm. you can get – Blake could play one way and you can get another quarterback to play the exact same way, but Blake is going to get the burn of it. Why do you think that is? We're in Jacksonville. Mm. So, okay. That's so, uh, we're, we're literally fighting perception every single day. Right. right? So, you want to go out there and believe in your process and uh, kind of go out there and just give your all and not worry about it. Uh, but it's inevitable you're going to hear about it. And um, him being the guy that's getting the ball, touching the ball every single play, mm -hmm. he's going to get the most of it. Well, you felt it every year since you've been in the league. For sure. Right. You know, you've seen Jacksonville grow. So, what's the, how's the city changing? The city has energy now. Mm -hmm. um, I think. You know, when we went out there, I, I say starting from camp, training camp, best camp we've ever had, um, top to bottom. I mean, we have guys fighting in practice mm. every single day, like literally fist fights. And, you know, it, it's, it sounds bad, but it was actually good, a good sign for me because I've been through it. Right. And Shout I kind of know what it Ramsey. looks like now. I'm like, yes, like mm -hmm. this is what we need. This is what it's about. We're not trying to kill each other, but we're out there trying to, you know, make each other better. And, like, for the first time, I felt that. Damn. Uh, the fights in practice are always a big thing locally. Like, but in, in – especially in training camp, and we were t we were also talking about how hot it is in Miami training camp. Jacksonville, obviously, is in, in Florida. I guess pretty hot down there. Uh, the fights are always a big deal. Like, it, it's like a f an actual problem. So you actually like when guys are fighting in training camp. Well, I think Is that it to a point? Do you ever have to break them up? Like, they, get to, they start to get real personal? Yeah, <laughs> we we've definitely had to break a few up, but I, I just think that it's been it's been such a long time. Like at least the first two years of my career with Freddie T and everybody, right. mm -hmm. it was way different. Like everybody were goons. Mm -hmm. That's how I got tough. Right. That's how I got gristle on my bones. You know what I mean? Like it was guys like that right. forcing you to be a certain way. Yeah. Uh, and then you know after like four years in the league, it kind of just got into this like powder puff type of deal. Emotions. And then this year brought it back, and it brought back those feelings. And I was like, dude, this is this is what it's about. Football's so, fun again. No question. Yeah. So looking to next year, obviously Bortles is going to be there. There was some talk that you guys were in the quarterback market. Obviously that's shut down now. You guys had a good season last year. Your defense is obviously still intact. Great defense. What what are what are we expecting from you guys next season? 
Well, I think first and foremost, you have to understand, you know, in the NFL, like the parity is so good that you never pick up where you left off. Right. Right. And if you go out there thinking that, you know, you're just going to, oh, we, you know, you know, lost in the championship game and we can just go into week one, like doing the same thing is not going to happen. So right. um, what you have now, though, is a foundation uh, and where, where to, you know, start from and build from. And I think the mindset and how we are as a team it's totally different than we've been, you know, in years in the past. And, you know, I think we put ourselves in positions to, you know, go out there and do some good things coming up. I don't really like doing predictions because I don't like people be, you know, rewinding the tape. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I will say that, you know, we're in position to go out there and put our best product on the field. So you're not willing to guarantee a Super Bowl next year? I'm not, I'm not going to I'm not gonna guarantee it. Um, but if we play up to our ability, we, we'll be – in that conversation, the last four teams in mm. January. Well, yeah, I mean that's 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 safe. Yeah. You were in that conversation anyway. I I will admit it. I did not have a lot of faith in in you guys. I will I will work on that. You ate your crow. I did. Yeah, yeah. I ate it. Yeah, that's Moving fine. On. But I was right up. Uh, I was right about my prediction of the Super Bowl. Okay, well, okay. Uh, which just remains the same. Yeah, okay. okay, so uh, the the New England Patriots. There was some uh, obviously the the Eagles. Surprised everybody in the Super Bowl this year, including myself. Um, although I, I do feel like the Eagles had the all-around better team, I just I had a problem doubting Tom Brady. So you have a lot of faith in Blake Bortles. What are you, what are your thoughts on Tom Brady? I mean, I, I'll say this: <laughs> my second year in the league was my first time going to the playoffs. Right? Mm -hmm. You remember who we played? We played the Steelers twice to get in the playoffs. We played them once to get into the playoffs, mm -hmm. and then played them again in the wild card. Guess who we played next? The Patriots. Guess who we played this year? The Steelers. And then who we play after that? Nice. The Patriots. You know what I mean? So that yeah. that just says it all. I mean, he's Dang. Is he the greatest quarterback of all time to you? Yeah. I mean, I, I think I, I don't even think it's a conversation, but Yeah, I mean he's It's crazy. I this year playing against him and being a part of that game that mm -hmm. I was in. Like I said before, it just felt like I was watching like ESPN like highlights or like NFL films. You know, like I couldn't believe that I was on the sideline witnessing that again and the way he did it. Mm -hmm. Like he just, it's just something about him, man. And I and just the way he moves around and like, I mean, <laughs> it's yeah. Well, uh, it's Passover for me because he. I am a Dolphins fan and I grew up in Pittsburgh, so I've been I've had to suffer. The pain of Tom Brady for a long time, but at this after last after the Super Bowl in Atla uh, against Atlanta, I just submitted. I'm like, I'm not going to live my life uh, like rooting for him to lose. It's an exercise in futility. It's a waste of my time, and right. I've been doing it for years. I'm just over. It. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna watch the greatest of all time do what he does and suffer the consequences of that. Like as far as I'm concerned, until he's out of the league, the Dolphins don't have a chance anyway, so it doesn't matter. Right, but. right. You see, uh, you see anybody around the league? Taking tips from the TB13, like changing up their diet. To, TB12. TB12. Don't be, don't be, don't be, don't be I don't know what the thing is. I'm disrespecting them purpose. <laughs> right, there. right. If Blake Bortles had a thing, I would know what that is. Oh, you would? You I would. would. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, <laughs> you see people like switching up your diet. Obviously, you've been in the league for a long time. Are mm -hmm. you switching anything up, like seeing how Tom Brady's doing his thing? Uh, I mean, I, I just think that if you take your job serious, then, you know, you're going to do things like that. I think depending on who you are and your body and how you go about your business, you're going to have like different – you know, routines and things mm -hmm. that you do. But, you know, obviously when a guy is 40 and 40 plus going out there and like making history, man, mm. uh, you you want to know, you know, where the juice is, you mm -hmm. know, and he's definitely got He's the somewhere. juice. He's not on the juice. He's got the juice. He's got the I, juice. Well, I'm, not, I'm, just, I'm not going on record saying anything. No, no, he got not. all kinds of juice. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not into the avocado ice cream uh, routine? No. Nah. <laughs> yeah, we had Snacks Harrison on uh, a couple weeks ago, and he said that he's like he's given up dairy. He's healthy snacks now. He's yeah. given up dairy. Meat. He's given up meat. Whoa, right? I know that's very aggressive. I don't know about that. Like, if I had to give up like anything, maybe red meat because I don't eat it that much. Right. But just meat in general. For um, snacks, I can't too? do the this I can't is... do the vegan thing. Oh, this, uh, this is probably the easiest city. Uh, in the country to go vegan in. Right, because they're making things that supposedly taste like regular food. Like, supposedly you'll never know the difference. Yeah, the Impossible Burger? Maybe maybe Trash. I'll try it one day. Don't tell me that I'm going to eat vegan, but maybe I'll try it and see. But if, mean, you, if you tell me, like, oh, we're going to a vegan spot, yeah. and I'm telling you, if you try this vegan 
uh, enchilada is going to taste yeah. just like a normal one, yeah. I'm going to no, be like, No, it doesn't Ugh. taste like a normal one. It doesn't. <laughs> it's nonsense. Like, it, what do you mean? If it tasted like the normal one, why wouldn't I just be eating that? Right. No, that, no true. And, and that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, don't give me a preconceived notion of like, yo, this is what it is. Yeah, you're selling right. me like, oh, oh, like this tastes exactly like fried chicken. In my mind, I'm about to eat fried chicken, but right, it's not yeah. fried chicken because right. it's not chicken. No. Exactly. So, and in your mind, you're going to be like, ugh, this is not yeah, it. Just right. tell yeah, me what this is this? Just tell me this is a vegan substance. thing. Right. right. I'm going to eat this substance <laughs> and I'll decide if it tastes good or not. But if you put, right. the, if you, if you put the expectation of fried chicken in my mind, right. it's, then, I, then I'm not going to hate vegan food. Right. I don't have a problem with what you eat, actually. That's not true. I, I, I kind of have started judging no, yeah, people's you, food. You, you food shame. Like a month. I don't food shame. I just don't. I think that people that eat their food, like when you get a plate of food, like at Thanksgiving, mm. right? How, so do you get your plate? I like to do go. like a layer of mashed potatoes. What do you mean? Here we go. I'm and then like put the things on top of it. So you get, pie. Basically, yeah. You just get like a whole bite of Thanksgiving stuff. Like you get the turkey and the, the corn and the mashed potatoes and the greens like all in one bite. And the people that separate their food are sh- sociopaths. Let me call you out because you're talking about people separate their food sociopaths. Just recently, we was talking about popcorn. Okay. And she said that she can't mix the cheddar popcorn with the caramel popcorn. Mm. And she said that's crazy. It is insane. Who wants cheese you and understand caramel? That, that you understand that that's crazy that you think that separating food is crazy. It is crazy. But not separating popcorn. First of all, I take popcorn very seriously, as we went over. And I don't want the cheese popcorn with the caramel. It's the cheese and sweet that's weird. Bye. I'm done. <laughs> I've, I've rest my case. Do you eat the popcorn like that? No, nah, normally when I get popcorn, it's just one kind. Right. Thank you. Okay. Vindicated. <laughs> popcorn and segregation. As far as my food, I don't mind... Like, I, I won't mix it all together, but I don't mind it touching. But I know people that don't like it touching. Yeah. Like, they'd rather have the plates with the, the dividers. They don't want the juice on it, yeah. Is oh, there yeah, anybody crazy. on and the And I don't team? want juice. I don't want the juice from one thing on my chicken, like my fried chicken. I don't eat that. Or, like, I don't want the juice from, like, you know what I mean? Like, juice from, like, cranberry the... sauce. Oh, on... no, no, no. The sweet. The sweet. Yeah, no, no, I, I can't, can't do sweet. You guys are. I'm done. Go, go. Fast the next question. <laughs> I don't I'm want the to... sweet with the salty. Great, no the sweet is for, the, for after I eat okay. the salt. Is there anyone mm-hmm. on your team? Brandon obviously uh, disagrees with me. So, uh, is there anyone on your team that like eats, like gets their food, and you just like can't, you can't even comprehend how a human could eat that much or just like that insanely? I think Puzz, Puzz Lesney. Ooh, yes. Puzz he's is a um, he's Puzz a machine. Brother. Yeah, he's a machine. Mm-hmm. So even like. Like, I'm a big guy, but I don't eat like that. Right. Um, like, he eats, like, a lot of meals in a bunch. of lot, Like, he'll eat, like, maybe five meals, and it's real full, full course meals. Like, yeah. if I eat, like, four or five meals, it's, like, small right, or whatever. Right. Like, I can't eat like that, but Puzz is probably. It's a Pennsylvania roots. He's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like, he's, uh, he's where, been in the league forever, too. Yeah, yeah this is how since his 11th year. Land. Yeah. Meat and potatoes, lamb. Yeah, whatever. For sure. Um, all right, well, taking it back to college really quickly because we wanted to ask you about this. You said your childhood hero was Michael Jordan, uh, which is mine too. Although I had, a, I had a couple, but Michael was up there for sure. Um, and you played basketball. So obviously a conversation that uh, happens every All-Star break is Michael Jordan versus LeBron James. Uh, I think LeBron is like the greatest superstar that ever, like just, just the full scope of everything that he is, like mm-hmm. off the court with social issues how he is as a like a family man like just never been in trouble he's the greatest like as far as that goes but i just can't i still am not ready to put him in the same category as michael jordan i mean do you know this is a a conversation that between like my peers like at least two times a week really and uh i'm a lebron fan and i think that and i played against him in high school um Hmm. i mean he's uh he's that guy you know but I just feel like Jordan, and, and obviously, you know, growing up, I saw Jordan, um, didn't get to witness a lot of the older games till I got older mm-hmm. and was able to, like, watch the film. Right. And I think it's always going to be a decision between, like, the killer instinct that Jordan had and that LeBron lacks, mm-hmm. right? Because LeBron can win as many championships as him. And he's already, I mean, the things that he's accomplishing, like, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I mean, if he, if he really wanted to, from the time he got in, yeah, he could average a triple double. Mm-hmm. Like he's just, wow. he's just that good. Yeah, yeah. He could. and um, and I don't, and it's because of the lack of killer instinct, so to speak. He didn't, or he hasn't. Now Jordan, it was just a different animal, mm-hmm. right? I mean, Jordan talking about challenging guys in practice. Like I've heard stories like him like beating up dudes. Oh yeah, punch punching teammates. dudes. Yeah. yeah, 
Didn't he punch Steve Kerr? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And LeBron would never do. I wouldn't see him doing that. Right. He chucks my up though. I feel like he chucks my up. Have real serious. You think so? Put hot, strong hands on him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. A strong hand on the yeah, shoulder. He'll, he'll do like the strong shoulder grab. Right. Dude, but I just don't see him and Kyrie. I, I think Jordan definitely hated losing more than winning. Mm -hmm. Right. And like by any means necessary, he was gonna. You understood that. Mm -hmm. You know. And when he's on the court, you know it. Like there's not no. Yeah, I think that that's the that's the conversation. You know, and that well, will always be the, the topic. Right. Yeah, and I agree with you. I that's why I always say angry LeBron is the best LeBron. Because that's that's fun to watch. And right. like that's that's to me, Jordan has like an aura about him that LeBron doesn't have. And maybe that's because LeBron is accessible and Jordan's not. Like we have social media, mm -hmm. and we can see like what he's doing. Mm -hmm. He's like fun skating around with his teammates and stuff. Like yes. you're not gonna see that with Jordan. So it's like that's why Kobe's admire the way that he is. Like mm -hmm. Mamba, that's a whole different Different just level. A different animal. But do you think he can ever actually pass Jordan? All those intangibles aside, like how many championships would he have to win <laughs> to be considered the greatest ever? He would have to never lose again. Simple as that. I, I, I a game, think. period. Oh, yeah, game. Like, yeah. Like, I mean, I just feel like it, it's tough when you like talk about like two like greats and then the greatest, and then you're trying to figure that out. I just feel like. You know, sometimes when LeBron is out there playing, it's guys that should not be on the floor with him mm. or guys that'll foul him and LeBron will just get up and be like, no, don't touch me. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. when Jordan, when dudes fouled Jordan, Jordan was in a grill. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like yeah. people had to pull Jordan off. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Don't touch me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If it's a foul and it's a cool foul, all right, but if you, you swinging for my head and grabbing my body, throwing me on the ground, I'm not yeah. smiling about it. Mm. Like there's nothing to smile about. You're gonna know, like, yeah, I am Stevenson. the greatest in the world, and I'm gonna show you every single day. Right. right. Lance Stevenson blowing in your face is not going. That's not like happening. That. I'm not. I'm not like on doing this while he's blowing <laughs> in my face. Right. He might get smacked. Like, right. he might yeah. get smacked. Come on, man. People's. I think right now, obviously, everyone's friends. People's like they don't want to have the conversation between wives. He's like, you know, you mess with my wife. Like everybody's, you know, say everybody's family's cool. Uh. Everybody's yeah. family's cool. I mean, everybody's that's, cool. A, that's LeBron's like whole thing, though. He's like the Taylor Swift of the oh, NBA. Whoa. Like stop, everybody's stop, friends. Stop! 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 I don't care where you're going. No. We're all friends here. Not Taylor well, Swift for nothing. Yes, he is though. He's, he does said it. Like Lillian Stevenson's blown and blown, blown in your face. There's other references. It's not happening. Okay. It's not happening. Okay, whatever. Anyway, uh, I I agree with you. He has that that killer mentality. That Jordan had that killer mentality. That's how it is for me. But I know a lot of young guys now. Like it, it kills me when kids are like, "Oh, like LeBron's better than Jordan." Like you're ten. I have no clue. Stop. Stop it. Sit down. But kids but they, don't. Kids don't care about winning the way that they used to though. Just it's like just LeBron not, don't, don't care about winning. Thing. Like LeBron experienced losing in a real way very early on, so he's not going to have that. He's not going to have that killer instinct. He experienced it when Jordan didn't. I don't know. I, I think that that's just something that's in you or not. It, it is. But, okay, so last year the, the NFL had a lot of stuff going on. There were, there were some controversy, controversies, obviously. Uh, a, lot, a lot happened in Dallas. The, obviously the, the protests. And the NBA, we all, we've talked a lot about the comparisons of the way the NBA players, and LeBron is a big part of this because he is the face of the NBA. And he has exercised his power and really his ability to do that has had a trickle down effect to other players. So they're able to have a voice. Um, their, their commissioner like almost encourages them to, to speak out about whatever it, like issues they want to speak about. And a lot of that started with the Donald Sterling situation, but as NFL players, do you, are you guys, I won't say envious, but do you wish that the NFL handled its players more the way that the NBA does? Yeah. I mean, that's something that we talk about. Um, I think that, I mean, just when we talk about things from guaranteed money to right. <clears throat> first thing, right, guaranteed to the money. way that um, they're viewed in the public, um, to the way, you know, everything from commercials to philanthropy efforts to whatever, like their commercials are always more lit. Mm -hmm. You know, philanthropy so side true. is always shown. Yeah. You know, I mean, when NBA games are going on, like the NBA cares and all of that stuff, it just looks totally different, mm -hmm. right? And, and we just feel like the the shackles are not on them, mm -hmm. you know? And they can be, without being, you know, ridiculous, they can still be individuals, right? Right. In the NFL, they want everybody to look the same, everybody to act the same, you gotta be a robot. If you don't, Team you're first. out of there. Yeah, 
Don't put yourself happen. above the team by saying something. For sure. All that for sure. So you're not, and if you are, you know, an individual or, or not even an individual, just be you. Like mm-hmm. if you just are just being you, yeah. right? And if you're doing an interview and you say what you feel because this is a free country, you can get cut, you can get reprimanded. I mean, it's it's a lot. So now when you're doing interviews, you're like thinking about those things instead of like being yourself. Right, like every year we we get shown like this video before the season starts, and it's about how to conduct yourself during interviews. Mm. Right, you know after games you you know you want to sit down for like five minutes, think about what just happened, think about the right things to say right. in the back, and you're just like, <laughs> what players are used as examples in that video? Um, I know I I, I mean they're, they're they like, like older guys though too, so they're like. Uh, Tiki Barber. Like, oh my God! Right, they're like older. They're like older guys that have kind of, like, you know what I'm saying? They kind of, you know, got Tiki in the How to Act video. <laughs> I just like. So I mean, that it, can't that cannot be right. Yeah. Oh my God. So I mean, wow. it's just just the way how the NBA, you know, how they do it. Mm-hmm. We like it. I think it's dope. What? Um, so what would have to change? Uh, do you think that maybe? Um, Because, I mean, just when I think about the NBA, again, like I feel like LeBron sets the tone for that because he is the face of the NBA. But the guaranteed money has a lot to do with how flexible they are able to be and how the the power that they have. For sure. So, and that's, and that's, that's a great point. And that's what I'm talking about. They're not going to, listen, the injury rate for football is 100%. Right. Woo. Right. So, if you give us guaranteed money, and we even feel like we could get hurt, mm-hmm. we're not playing. Imagine that. And we only got one game a week for 17, 18 weeks. Mm. And if you got your star guy sitting out, I think that's why it'll never be that way. The NBA, she got 82 games in a season. Like, right. guys taking three weeks off, just mm-hmm. chilling on the sideline, getting paid to well, yeah, be an I mean, assistant the game, coach. The game mm-hmm. itself is, is, is totally different. So I don't, mm-hmm. I don't know that – that it's even possible for the NFL yeah. to ever have fully guaranteed money. But since since we know that that's kind of impossible, just the way that the, the sports are constructed, um, would it make a difference if someone like Tom Brady was LeBron-esque in that spot? Because really, mm. Brady, as far as like being buttoned up and never getting in trouble and you know stuff like that, he don't get involved in social issues. That's mm. not his thing. I'm sure he does plenty of charity work, but he's – He's not involved in social issues, but someone like Tom Brady being like outspoken and being mm. the way that LeBron is and exercising his power. Do you think something like that would set a tone for the NFL, or do you think it's just because in my mind the way I look at it is it's the NFL should do it. Like the NFL mm. should be ahead of it because to me the NBA is is passing them in that in that regard. Like mm. the NBA is the culture. No, they're lapping them at this point. And and. and the NFL is not paying attention to it to me. Mm. Like you should be empowering players. You should be letting players speak their mind. You should for for nothing else than just branding itself. Like yeah. it's not everything is negative. Having personalities is what sells. And when you look at all the injuries, you're talking about 100% injury rate. You got Aaron Rodgers out. You got mm-hmm. Carson Wentz out. Like Deshaun Watson. Watson. Like you you have these star players going down. Why what, why wouldn't you want fans to know and be embraceive to or embrace more personalities than just the quarterback on the team? Yeah, no, I agree. And I think, you know, it may be something that would have to start with the NFLPA. Mm. Um, you know, for those people that don't know what that is, the NFLPA is like the players, right? And mm-hmm. the NFL is one one thing. Like, that's totally different. Right. Um, and, you know, every year we select reps. Um, and maybe it starts there. I mean, I don't know. The reps are the ones that go out there and are in court fighting for us and stuff like that. So, um, you know, maybe you pick the reps and pick, one from every team. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. where where you have to start. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know where you would have to start to kind of start that conversation. But I think a lot of guys are scared of certain issues. A lot of guys are nervous about being judged. And, like, what if it was like a Tom Brady? Do you even think guys will accept him because of some people? Well, a lot of players hate him. Well, I mean, right? I mean, he well, he had a he had to make America great again hat in his yeah, locker. Yeah, yeah, Tom Brady. I'm not saying out. specifically Tom Brady. I'm saying you know t- somebody I mean, on yeah. the level that Tom Brady yeah. is, like somebody who is yeah. dominant, but, but, who is proven. So, so, does, so does it have to be a person? Is not going to get cut, what, no matter right. what he says. Like uh, some someone on that level. Yeah. I I agree with you. Half the league would be like, huh? But right, if it was right. somebody on Tom Brady's level, is more along the lines of yeah. what I'm talking about. 
I would like to see it. I would like to see it. I mean, it's. Yeah. To, I don't see how it could possibly happen. Well, t- the, I'll tell you that. Thing. Like, the NFL is such. Like, the guys. I mean, just think about it. On a basketball team, you got 15 guys. You know what I mean? On one mm-hmm. team that you got to worry about, like, making sure they get along. You got 53 guys on a football team that, right. like, they got their own corners and clicks. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, you can be together as far as, like, we ride for each other and we'll go out there and, and bleed for each other. Yeah. But not every team is like that. You know, and I feel like basketball is like, it's it's really them against whoever. Yeah. And you can see that. You can tell. You know what I mean? And um, I, I don't know if I don't yeah. know if. And football to its core is pretty conservative, and like religious based and very like mm-hmm. by the books. And there's a there's a right way to do things and a wrong way to do things. It's that as a, at its core, like football, and that's why patriotism or being American has grabbed on the football so much because there's set rules there's a right way to do things there's a wrong way to do things Mm -hmm. there's things that you could say that would literally lose your job regardless of how productive you are on the field and that's just not the case for basketball so i really don't know how you fix it yeah Yeah, well i mean uh, that's that all that's true but you know times are changing like all those things that happen existed before the age of social media so like I said earlier, kids don't necessarily care about winning. Like the way that the, the way that I look at like what are you playing for? You're playing for a championship. You're not playing out here to be cute. Like this is what this is what you're doing. What are you out here working for? Kid, you look at Odell. Odell hasn't won anything. I love Odell. Yeah. I love Odell. I think he's great for the league. I think he's a superstar. He's fun to watch, but he hasn't won anything. And he is one of the faces of the league. And he might not. And he he kept the Giants in the conversation. I mean, he had the best Super Bowl commercial. Right? Hands mm-hmm. down. Best Super Bowl commercial. Had nothing yeah. to do with the game. Mm-hmm. So, to me, the, the NFL has to pay attention to it. But when you've got uh, the, the most progressive owner getting a, an award from the Jackie Robinson Foundation out here talking about players aren't going to kneel, that, that's, that's really where it starts. I mean, what do you do with that? What do you do with that? That's the guy getting an award for, uh, for like, social awareness and advan- advancing racial equality, and that's what he's got to say. So, that's kind of the problem. But speaking of personalities, um, you're an L.A. guy. So we got to ask you about Lonzo. Um, first, <laughs> first of all, I, I love Lonzo. Like I'm, I'm a fan. Mm. I want to see him do well. Uh, and I, and I also, I also think Lavar is great. But uh, you know, I'm in the business, so any like headlines are fun. Yes, and, of course. And Lavar is a headline machine. Uh, I, and I get it. Like I get the whole obnoxious thing. But what do you, what do you think about uh, Big Baller Brand? Uh, and then we'll get to Lonzo. I like Lonzo. Okay. UCLA family. Yeah, yeah of I, course. I think I, I mean I think he's a good player. I like him and I like how he's handled his business as far as I mean, I don't know who's in his ear talking to him, but if you got your dad that's you know, that's your dad and you're mm-hmm. nothing like him, that says a lot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously LeVar will do what he's gonna do as far as positioning and timing and all of that stuff. I think he's done a good job with that, but I mean the way Lonzo's like carried himself and just about playing basketball, you know, I think he's doing a good job of that. Uh, the big baller brand, I mean, I don't know. I, I don't. I, pro- I wouldn't wear it, but <laughs> triple B's. I, well, to Gotti. yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not spending that much on. Like, if I'm gonna spend that much on shoes, it's gonna. It's gonna be heels. Like, that's just. I, I might get them flats though. Can't do them it. little Zo, little, little Zo the, slides. The slides. Yeah, get them some Gucci flip flops <laughs> for one. No. One on the left, one on the right. No, but I do. I I I love Levar from this perspective. I think that. Uh, I actually blame Jello. Jello messed it up for everybody. Come on, man. Come on, man. Like the, the the best argument was that he's raised these three boys. None of them have gotten in trouble. You got to go to China and steal some stupid Louis glasses, and you messed up the argument for everybody. Well, none of them got in trouble in America. Now they can poke holes in argument. it, and that stills the argument. That's true. They haven't got in trouble in America. By the way, Trump had nothing to That's do with true. that. Shocker. <laughs> uh, who, who knew UCLA had some people with money that went there? You know, like yeah, some pull some strings. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, I what do you think of Lavar overall? Then I will say that because I think I think what he does is great. Aside from the fact that he's like a, a headline machine, I actually think yeah, I like I, the fact that he is doing his own thing. That's 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 his dad. I mean, I've, I mean, my biological father wasn't there. You know what I mean? So mm. to have him there like that, any kid will want that, right? But I think it, when I was Lonzo's age, I would have had to like. Pop him in his ribs a couple of times, right, like yeah. yo, chill. You know what I mean? But I love the assert. Like he's assertive. Like he's he get he gets it. Mm-hmm. As far as the, I don't know if he has his NBA or not, but as far as like the strategical planning and everything mm-hmm. like that, he's doing an amazing job. He gets it. I just think that there's a way about going to do it and 
something tells me that he doesn't care about that. He's just going to continue doing what he's doing. But, um, you know, as long as those boys are playing ball and they're, and they're doing the best that they can, just let, let their dad do whatever, you know. Would you have a problem if you were on his team and he was he was doing all doing all the the yapping? And he was the coach. No, no, no. Like, like if you like if you're one of Lonzo's. Oh, teammates. I was one of the teammates, and Lonzo's dad was doing yeah. all of that, popping off. Like talking about the coach. Yeah, well, like some yeah. Of the, some of the more like in in locker room stuff, like talking about the coach, talking <laughs> about like what team members are good and right. not. That's what I was about to say. And if it's about the coach. I don't have nothing to do with that. The coach is going to have to worry about that on his own. But if it's, like, attacking me and a couple of my best friends and, you know what I mean, like then, then yeah, I got an issue. And I don't know if I would take that out on, on LeVar Lonzo. or Lonzo. Right. I think Lonzo would have to get that action first because he's right there in the <laughs> locker room. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he'd have well, to. Well, cool. That's, it seems like everybody And that's cool. what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, it's just a double-edged sword. Like, you got this cool dude, seems quiet, like, mm-hmm. just goes out there about his business. Then you got the dad, who's just the opposite. But it's a trickle-down effect because, look, you're sitting next to me in this locker room, and we're going to have to have a talk because if your dad keep running his mouth, mm-hmm. you know, some, something's going to have to happen. Lonzo's actually not quiet, though. He, got, he has a rap album. It's not like he can... I won't we'll call it that, but like yeah. he's not like he can. We can say that he's is. quiet That's though. I think is. he's just. It's he, to me, he's so different how he played at UCLA and mm-hmm. even in summer league. I felt like he was just playing downhill mm-hmm. fast. I understand it's a different. Uh, it's a different league, a different speed, but he just felt like eye test. He felt like he was playing faster and more aggressive right. than he is now, and maybe it's because he's been injured. Um, but I felt like that from the from the beginning. Yeah, like is he like just trying to tweak his game to kind of figure it out? Yeah. yeah. He's, First he's year. young, yeah. He's, he's also under an incredible amount of scrutiny that other rookies are not under, right. and not just For because sure. he's the LA. second pick. Not just because he's LA. It's because Levar. Like right. Levar pitched him, and then Magic didn't help, which is why I keep saying like, yeah, Lonzo's not going nowhere. That's Magic Johnson's right. first mm-hmm. big move. Be our franchise he's, guy. He's Man. he's riding out with that one for a while. Well, one of Levar's uh, things that he is he is working on, which I think he needs to speed that up a little mm-hmm. bit, is he wants to do a, like a big baller league. Which is would be something in between an option for uh, guys. guys coming out of mm-hmm. high school not having to go to college. Obviously, there's a lot going on with the NCAA, with mm-hmm. paying not you know some, some money is going here, going there. Um, and I I think the whole the whole system is a disaster. Like not even not just basketball, <laughs> football. Obviously, I don't agree with it at all. Even though I know people make the argument that high school kids are not their bodies aren't ready for the NFL, mm-hmm. but I would say there are some running backs out there that can make that transition, and I don't know why you can't be on a practice mm. squad if you're a wide receiver or whatever. Like, I mean, you can make that argument, but I just think it should be an individual situation as opposed to forcing kids to go to school for three years and play for free <clears throat> as basically a, a D league for the NFL. But what are, what are your thoughts on how the NCAA uh, looks right now? I mean, I, I agree with what you said, and I think that it's starting to make LeVar look really good. Mm-hmm. And I think you're going to find a lot of guys, venture capitalists, mm-hmm. business owners, investing, being, you know, being the ones that are like the bridge to like yeah. really make it happen. And, you know, having campaigns to like really just block out the NCAA. Putting money towards LeVar will prove how woke you are. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Right? It just, it just will prove how Man. woke you are. Would you let your kid play in the, in the LeVar League? To get them to the to the NBA? Yeah, in this day and age. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Like sure. if 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 I just obviously hypothetically speaking had a son that like wasn't really trying to go to college and mm-hmm. like came to me with like the real issues like I can't like it's too much going on mm-hmm. like Levar got this thing going on right. he has like all this propaganda you know what I mean I just feel <laughs> like if they build it up to where where it could be and Levar does it the right way right. LeVar propaganda is the best propaganda. It's the best. Do you think that the that the NCAA, uh, they need to f- figure out a system to pay players? Yeah. For, first of all, I've always felt like that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm going to UCLA and you're barely getting under $1,000 like to live. It's trash. We make the most money for all the other sports, mm-hmm. right? I mean, it's just like, it just makes sense, you know? And like, what was our boy? Uh, they gave him $100,000 at Arizona. Sean um, Miller. Yeah. So they gave him a hundred thousand dollars. Well, I mean, no, 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 they didn't give. They, um, DeAndre Ayton. Right, right, right. Yeah. 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 So if you break it down, I mean, that's that's not nothing crazy. You know what I mean? No. If you're, if you're. Oh no, he's very underpaid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, if yeah. you're a guy of his caliber and you give him that, 
Okay. And I and just like you said, it should go situation to situation. Right. Like, you know, obviously you're not gonna pay everybody. No. But the main guys as a rec- like a recruiting chip, like yo, like we need him, right? And we need him because we need to make money for the school. Yeah. Right? We need to sell these tickets. So we have to do this. You know, pay my mortgage as a coach. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I just think that Get here. the coaches, uh, the coaches' mortgage is paid. All right, coaches do true. fine. That is true. Coaches I know for fo- I know for football. Yeah, he think about they getting paid. lit. Got to pay his they're mistress's get, mortgage. Get, okay, let's not go there. But the 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 coaches are doing fine. They're the lowest level of like concern as far as making money yes, goes of uh, in college sports for sure. But the NBA, if the NBA is smart, which they are, mm-hmm. uh, they'll start. They'll start getting that D League popping. Sorry, G League. Yes, G League. They'll start getting the G League popping. Gary League. Because if I'm a if I'm a one and done, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me why you wouldn't just do that. Right. But I know it's for visibility purposes. Because you why you want to go play in the G League when you can play in college? Everyone sees you. You know what I mean? You're gonna get paid anyway, regardless of what the rules are. Mm-hmm. So make a little money and get some visibility, and then get drafted. But I, I think the NBA is gonna make some adjustments, but. We'll see. Or LeVar will get a pop in. Who knows? He's going to do something. I'm team LeVar, though. <laughs> Can we switch back to football real quick? Yes. I just want to what you what did you think about the tight end position right now? Obviously, it's become more of a passing league. Mm-hmm. You came in kind of as a ball catcher, and you start blocking, so you, your strengths as a blocker. Mm-hmm. The positions have gone in and out. Like I've said, the running backs are back now. I feel like they're more important. What do you think about tight ends in the league right now? Um... I think that, you know, it's only a few teams that have, like, the old school. Mm-hmm. I put my hand on the ground, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it's a little different. Um, I mean, it, it all depends on the offense, too. But I think it's more of a passing league as far as tight ends are concerned. And, you know, they're not – it's weird because they'll go draft a guy that can't block a lick. Mm-hmm. And then once he gets into the NFL, will be like, damn, we got to go get a blocking tight end. You know right. what I mean? And then yeah. they'll, they'll go 12 personnel that's two tight ends. They'll go 12 personnel and be like, okay, now we'll use this blocking tight end and then throw this guy all the passes. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I think it's, like, open to interpretation just depending on your philosophy and how you want to play ball. For us, I mean, we'll run first, play action, take our shots when we got them. Uh, so I fit perfect in our system, right? And uh, there's a few more teams out there that kind of play that way. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, just depending on who you are, I think. What is Who does Jacksonville – what pieces does Jacksonville need to draft to repeat what you guys did even this season? Um, well, we went defense the last couple of years, mm-hmm. and I think that we're going to probably focus on offense this year. Uh, kind of beef up the offensive line a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, probably get another receiver. Um, probably get another linebacker, um, like a middle linebacker maybe, mm-hmm. I think, because Puzz is in his 11th year. Right. Um, so we'll see what happens, man. Like, I don't – we're pretty stacked, you know what I mean, as far yeah. as, like, top to bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but we can use some linemen for sure. All right. Well, before we let you go, um, since you, you kind of shamed me about Blake Bortles, can you tell me something about Blake Bortles other than his high interception rate that, uh, <laughs> that, would, that would make you – Shots fired. No, it's, it's – you know what? There's a, there's, a, there's a whole, like, cult following for Blake Bortles. People, are, people have recognized that Blake catches it a lot. And have started supporting him even before you you were on this. I, I, there's a whole there's a whole Blake Nation. I took my fifth year at Ball State and I played against him in a bowl game UCF mm-hmm. and I was just blown away. Like <laughs> during the week, it was like, ah, oh, he's playing against ball. He's playing against us. He can't be too. Gr-. He's he is, a gamer, bro. He's a bad. He's a bad boy. He's a gamer, bro. Blake is. Uh, he's not necessarily gonna wow you in practice. Like he'll do some cool stuff in practice, yeah. but in the game. Like, he in the huddle, all that. Like, he's he's a guy that you – I'll take him in the bar with me. You know what I mean? Like, Blake is that kind of dude. He's mm-hmm. not not going to say a lot. You know, like – You take, him, you take like him in the bar with you? Like, like, I would take him in the bar with me, like, if it was a bar fight. Like Oh, you think he's, he's – he's, what? Like, he's tough. Like, Blake yeah. is like – He ain't about that business. He is with the shit. He really is. What? Yeah, yes. he really is. All right, this is a re- this is a reveal for me. Okay, so listen, you have to pick your bar fight partners very carefully. Yes. All right, I have mm-hmm. m- too much experience in this. Okay, you can't just go out <laughs> with anybody uh, when you're in that environment. So, but that had to be something that happened that that made you say that. Can't get lumped. All right, I'll just tell you. So I'll, I'll tell you, it? it's plenty of plays, but just I'm just saying there was one play in the game. It was like third and eight. He dropped back, 
went through his progression, wasn't nobody there, took off and ran, ran a dude over, and cussed him out after he ran him over. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yes. Like, Blake is going, Blake is going, <laughs> he's the type that's going to run you over, cuss you out. If you jump up and get in his face, it don't matter if you're a linebacker or whoever. He's going to cuss you out and be and just let you know, like, I'm going to bust your ass on the next play. So, that, that's, so whether he that throws a pick, whether, it doesn't matter. Like, that, his, he has a short-term memory. Which you should have in this right. league, right? Because if you don't, mm -hmm. you end up sinking too low to where you lose your confidence, right? Right. And the way he's been able to battle back is because he didn't lose his confidence, mm -hmm. and that's, you know, I, 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 that that says a lot about him. So hmm. ten people are running over people saying, "I pray for you." Like, what is like, <laughs> come here again. What's good? Look at this business. Mm. I like it actually. Yeah. That might, I have From to. Florida. I'm gonna think about it, but yeah. I ha I have to say, some you vouching for him going into a bar fight with you is 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 important. For sure. Brownie points. You can't you can't ride out with anybody. Put some respect on his name. Joy. I might have to. <laughs> I think I might have to now. I'm gonna think about it, but I think I might have to. Uh, thank you so much for joining for us today. Sure. We appreciate you coming in. That appreciate was nice. Appreciate and, it. And your very strong words for uh, for Blake Bortles. Mm. I might call him Blake Bortles now. Do I have to? I mean, you do whatever you need to. <laughs> He's going to show up regardless I every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much to Mercedes Lewis for joining us on this bonus edition of the Maybe I'm Crazy podcast. Make sure you subscribe and share and uh, like and follow all of our social media pages at Maybe I'm Crazy Pod. Yes, please. Mercedes Lewis and I are best friends now. Yeah, pretty much.